I'm T. Payne from ImpatientProgrammer.net. This is PySide and PyQT QList Widget in three minutes. This week's joke is I have no joke. All right, so QList Widget. Anytime you have a list of items that need to be displayed continually to the user, this is the tool to use. It is also useful if the user will be selecting multiple items. QList Widget inherits from QList View and a bunch of other UI classes I personally never use. If the user only needs to select one item from the list, consider using a Q combo box. All right, let's look at a simple example. Before we examine code, let's go ahead and run it, see what happens. So here is our output window. All it has is numbers one through five and each of these individual items contained within a list widget. All right, in our code, we start with our standard imports, create an instance of our app and widget. We've seen all this code before. Then we create an instance of our queue list widget. Next, we populate our list widget using a for loop and adding each item in with a number as the text right here. Finally, we add our widget to the layout, show the window, and run the application. Now let's look at alternate ways of adding these items as well as customizing the QList widget. And let's go ahead and demo the code to see what it's actually doing. And here in the window, we have our items just as before, but if you look closely, you'll notice a slight difference in color variation between four and five and two and three. We have alternating row color turned on. Also, if we click and drag, we'll notice that we can actually drag these items around to rearrange them. All right, so let's examine the code that actually creates this. First, just after I instance the QList widget, I enable alternating row colors for items. I'm still not sure why this isn't a default. Next, I enable dragging and dropping within the widget using this flag to do so. After that, I add items by instancing the item and passing the list widget instance as a parameter or argument right here. Finally, we see a new way of adding a collection of items to a list right here. So if I so desire, I can comment this code out, uncomment this code out, and it'll work just as before. The only difference is what we did in previously at quite a few lines is we did in a single line. That's all. Also worth noting in the previous method by creating a queue list widget item is that an item is returned and you can manipulate it further down below in that same loop. So this would be useful if you wanted to set an icon or set a specific look for that item. Whatever you wanted to do could happen right here very easily. And now let's go over some common functions for queue list widgets and queue list widget items. Add item which takes in an item adds a queue list widget item. You can also pass it text to create and add an item from the given text. Also, you can add items plural. So you can add a list of strings and an item will be created for each individual text. Sort items is used for sorting items in an alphabetical or custom order. Set selection mode allows singular or multiple items to be selected. Set alternating row colors does, you guessed it, sets the alternating row color to be on or off. Item pressed and item clicked are function signals for when an item is pressed or clicked. The final widget function is clear and removes all items in that current list. For queue list widget items, the three functions I find myself using the most are set icon, set hidden, and set tooltip, which do just that. <laughs> We've covered this in previous tutorials. Excellent work, buddy. Exercises in the description. If you would like to see a practical application built from scratch, check out my tool development series linked in the description. Thank you to all my wonderful patrons, and as always, like, subscribe, and keep the dream alive.